Hi, I'm Matt and welcome to Soil Lab. We're going to take a little different look at the types of studies we do down here at Soil Lab today. So, sorry to disappoint right off the bat, but no data today. We will be looking at a couple of the studies that we have going on continuously where we're looking at turf grass quality, both in the lab and later in the field. So what are we gathering here? We're gathering data both in a sandy soil and a native soil that we're going to feed to the My Soil team so that they can make great recommendations for their customers in regions across the country. So let's just give you a little walkthrough of what we're looking at here and the why behind it. So right here behind me, we have the front row of treatments all in a sand peat mixture. This is a 5% peat mixture by volume, but predominantly sand. And in the back row, all the way across, we're in a native soil. Now that soil is medium textured. It's really silty. It would be a silt loam if you were looking at that soil textural triangle. Now why do both the sand and the native soil? Well that sandy soil, well it well represents those of you with sandy soils first off, but secondly it really lets us isolate individual variables or nutrients in different products. So what are we looking at? We have a row of sand, sandy soil, our row of native soil, and then we have individual treatments uh, across each of those. So Here's a great look at our untreated control. Of course, we're not talking data, but I couldn't get out of talk saying untreated control today. Here in our untreated control, you see the sand versus the native soil, and that's great evidence of how much just inherent nutrition there is in that native soil and how much inherent nutrition is lost when we're looking at that pure sand. So neither of those have gotten any fertilizer. The rest of these have gotten various fertilizers. So what are some of the types of products that we're looking at? We're looking at products that include different amounts or types of say biochar, humic acid, not different sorts of coatings on urea, so slow release coatings that might be polymer or organic. And we're also looking at different chemistries of nitrogen, such as methylene ureas and other long chain ureas that take those soil microbes a bit longer to break down. So I'm gonna give you a moment to look for yourself and see those differences in turf grass color, growth, density, and overall quality. It's been about six weeks since our last application, and that's important because we like to track our release curves for that six to eight week period. That's why in your MySoil test results, you'll see the recommendations are often for four to six weeks. Remember, a lot of this data gets fed straight to that MySoil team to drive those recommendations. How do we measure that nutrient release curve? Well, we do that visually. We do that by measuring plant growth, and you should be able to see some differences in plant growth behind me. These were just mowed two days ago. We also take soil samples with the MySoil test on regular intervals to track that nutrient release, um, as well as that nutrient uptake in the grass that's removed during mowing. So as we look at this trial behind us, we clearly see a difference in color density quality between the sand and that native silt loam soil. Now those soils are quite different, not only texturally, but in their soil biology and their CEC or cation exchange capacity, as well as in their percent organic matter. So why is it that when we look at these other product trials where we did receive fertilizers and amendments that really the differences between the sand and the silt loam are really minimal. Well, that largely comes down to the types of products that we're studying and the types of products that the MySoil team recommends. Many of these products are in combination with other organic amendments, such as humic acids, biochars, and other organic coatings and chemistries. And when we have those organics and chemistries, it helps to build the soil, build those microbial populations, and kind of level the playing field across soil types like you're seeing here consistently across the treatments and different products that we're using. Now you may be sitting there staring at your screen saying, hey Matt, this all looks great in the lab, but this isn't what it's like in the real world. Well, every study that we do on product evaluation here in the lab, on the bench behind me and other benches, we replicate out in the field. And so the study that you're looking at behind me right now, we're gonna head out into the field and look at next so that you can see how these products are in the real world where they're dealing with climatic stresses, irrigation systems, kids playing soccer on them, um, pests, weed pressures, etc. So follow along as we head out in the field and see what this looks like in the ground. 
All right, so as I mentioned, here we are out in the field and we've got the exact same treatments here in the field as you just saw in the lab. Now, something to keep in mind is in these, in these trials, we randomized the order of the treatments. So this isn't a mere image of what you saw in the lab, but the same treatments exist. So I've positioned myself right here on the untreated control so that you can see those differences in the plots around me. Now let's talk about how this untreated control in the field might differ just a little bit from what you saw in the lab. This lawn was established and fertilized normally last season. And then we started this fertility product and amendment trial this season. So it's been treated differently this season, receiving no fertility or amendments while each of the other plots has. So this is one of those field plot locations that we have that represents the home lawn. We love this location because it's full sun. It receives traffic. You might see the soccer goal over here on the side. We've got kids kicking balls around out here all the time. So it's a real world test of these different products. What I'd love for you to do is just take a look across these products and comment below which one you think looks best. So now that you've taken a second to look at all these treatments and use your eye to pick out your favorite, some of the things I'm looking for as a reminder are density, color, growth, and overall turf grass quality. And to me, the plot right here is that, that plot that's kind of the one that's shining brightest, that's that overall top performer. And what's really cool about that is this is the exact same treatment that was our top performer visually in the lab. And our data tracks that way at this field trial location, in the lab, and at another field trial location about 70 miles from here. That's what we're hoping to find is that consistency within the lab and across locations as we're building this database that gets shipped off to the MySoil team to make recommendations for your lawn and your garden. Now where are we at kind of in the fertility programming? We last saw an application um, on each of these plots except for that untreated control six weeks ago and per the rep, my soil recommendations, next week is gonna be its next fertility application. So I love looking at these at the end of that fertility cycle because that's where we really start to see some of the products kind of run out where others are still persisting and providing that nutrition. Well, thanks for coming along on a little bit of a soil lab field trip with me today. It was fun to not talk data for a change, but just to look at turf growth in the lab and out here at one of our field trial locations. If you enjoyed this, please like and comment, subscribe, hit that notification button so you know when new videos are coming out. And until next time, I'll see you in the lab.